Bye. Hey, Faisa. Hey, J-Dot. Hey, Georgia Girl. Hi, S. Hi, Comic Brook. Hey, Jenna. It's not code for anything. Cleaning? No. Hey, Backrooms. Hey, Waybone. Hey, Kelly. Any cleaning I do is almost certainly going to be off camera. Hey, Google user. Hey, Killface. Ah. Hey, Riley. Ooh, rash. Ooh, shitty. Uh, I do not agree with patriarchy now. Hey, Zaidi. There's Zaidi. Anunnaki. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Waybone. Yeah, happy MLK Day. Hey, color purple. As a Canadian, we don't really have M uh, Martin Luther King Day in uh, in Canada. What's for dinner? I don't know. Hey, George girl. I haven't really gotten hungry yet. I'll probably just end up uh, making myself uh, spaghetti off camera. Zadie, howdy. Thank you very much for the super, stat, uh, super chat, uh, Zadie. Hey, bunny star. McDonald's, cool. Hey, nice gen pizza. Nah, nah, it'll be a... Uh, like I said, I'm probably just going to make myself a uh, spaghetti. Hey, Danielle. Off camera, just because I've, I've made spaghetti on camera often enough. Taco spaghetti. I mean, I keep letting you up and you keep immediately jumping down. Hey, Rebecca. Uh, no, I didn't. Hello, fresh meal. Nice. And does Getty keep me full? I mean, pretty much the whole night. Pretty much the whole night. And then I just like, uh, yeah, I have little bits of stuff. Uh, yeah, I have snacks here and there. Hey, Bali. CCs. I kind of forgot to. Sorry, just uh, marking down some stuff for my journal. Resuming where I left off last week, Comic Brook.
just showing off the uh, the last couple boxes of uh, comics that I didn't show last time. The ones that I will be keeping. Who would be on my death note? I don't know. Your mom. Hey, do a dance. Never watched Edder Banks. Still making my way back through, uh, still making my way back through Star Trek Deep Space Nine and still making my way through, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Hey, Diana. What about Tiger Bank? Adrian Dye is doing a cleaning stream. Erotic comics. I've got a couple. I've got a couple of those, uh, Rebecca. One? Do I have more than one? I have one. Do I have other ones? Or is it only the one? Went to laundromat with your husband today. He hates it. He made such a fuss like a kid. It is pretty annoying. They are pretty annoying. Going to the gym today, but it's full. <clears throat> hey, Bunny Star. Glad Cove finally legal. Uh, did Tim Cook ruin Apple? I have no idea. I've never cared about Apple as a company. Like, I've just, I've never cared about Apple as a company. I've never had an Apple product. I've never paid any attention to what Apple does. So, I have genuinely no idea uh, what Tim Cook's been like for Apple. When Chantel coming home? I don't know. Ask your mom. I'm sorry. Less than two weeks. Less than two weeks until she comes home. That's all I'll say. I have no idea if Chantel's given the date she's coming back. So. I'm not going to. Do miss a living one? Nah. Nah, I'll be glad to have her back. I'm eager for her return. So do I, Sherry. So do I. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Fernanda. Hey, Triggers. Last of Us? No, I haven't watched uh, Last of Us uh, Anunnaki. I'm undecided on whether I want to watch The Last of Us. Maybe I'll see if Chantel wants to watch it. We're going to be watching uh, Wednesday together. I know Chantel and I are going to be watching uh, Wednesday together. Um, I'll see if she wants to watch uh, Last of Us together as well. If she doesn't, I may just not watch it at all, frankly gotten really good ratings so far they do see it does seem like they're uh keeping it very very uh 
true to the game. It's just, I already watched, like, I already watched a Let's Play of the game. Is sort of what it comes down to, so it's like, Gemma! Welcome, Gemma! But yeah, that's sort of what it comes down to for me, is like, it's a faithful re it's a faithful recreation of a story I've already seen. Hey, Pug Lover. So it's, it leaves me like, do I really need to watch, do I really need to watch the show? I've already seen the game. I've already seen the story. You watch for the feelings? Sure. So yeah, I'm just, I'm undecided uh, as far as uh, Last of Us goes. Is Vanna White the next trivia? But Vanna White isn't, Vanna White doesn't do trivia. Too much media out there in too little time. Especially when, especially when you're like me and you just never end up making the time to watch any of that media. Vanna is clean. Vanna's sole purpose is for old dudes to ogle her. That's the only, hey, Georgia girl. Like, her job is completely useless. Like, she does nothing. The only reason Vanna White's on that show is so that dudes have something to ogle. It's kind of silly. Jenna should be our Vanna. Way to diminish one's accomplishment. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's aware that she's only there to look pretty. Like, I'm sure she's aware that the only reason she's on that show is to look pretty. Makes me think differently about why my grandson loved the show so much. I'll be honest, like, Wheel of Fortune always just really bored me. I mean, frankly, Booze, and I say fuck Wheel of Fortune. Pat say Jack. I'm, I'm pretty sure Say Jack still hosts Jeopardy. Jeopardy's great. Jeopardy's a good show, though I haven't watched it in like 20 fucking years. Maybe less than 20 years, but I haven't watched uh, I haven't watched Jeopardy in forever. But uh yeah, Jeopardy's great. Hey, Gemma. And I'll pay for 500. They got rid of five. They got rid of the uh, odd numbered. So like the first round, it's like two, four, six, eight, a thousand. And then the second round is like four, eight, 12, 16, 2000. So Jeopardy no longer has a $500, uh, 
$500 clues. Elon Musk and Alien? No. Jeopardy has a new host. A couple, doesn't it? Tucker Carlson? What a douchebag. Have I eaten? Nah. Not yet. No, attendees, I think it's just like to uh like to adjust to something LeVar Burton would be the new host. He would have been perfect. He would have been absolutely perfect, and then they just completely Fucked it over, and he was like, yeah, I don't even want to host anymore. <laughs> like, they screwed the pooch thoroughly enough that, like, LeVar Burton just lost any interest in even wanting to host. But he would have been the perfect host. Everybody loves him. You know, he is universally beloved. Uh, he is charming as all get out. Hey, Barney. And, like, between Star Trek and reading Rainbow, he's got a history of being, you know, of encouraging learning and shit like that. Delta dude, yeah. No updates on the Doctor. Right with my roommate this year. Uh, we'll see, Anunnaki. We'll see. So, yeah, Lavar Burton would have been <clears throat> the absolute best choice for host, and then they just completely. But what happened was the producer wanted to host. Like as I recall, what happened is the producer really wanted to be the host and chose himself as the host. And then there was such a huge backlash to it that he had to take it back. And they went with uh, whoever they've got hosting now. Reading Rainbow. I never actually read, uh, watched Reading Rainbow as a kid. I never actually watched that one. I'm not sure if it was on in Canada. Ken Jennings. Which is fine. I mean, Ken Jennings, I liked I liked Ken Jennings back when he was on the show. Give me a second. I gotta blow my nose. Family feud? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Family Feud is like, yeah, I don't know. Was... I did watch Family Feud back in the day. And it's like, I can't watch the Steve Harvey version because Steve Harvey is, his whole bit is just that making that one same face. Like, like that's his entire fucking thing on that show. He makes that one fucking face that in every single time, like that's the only thing he does. That is his, that is his entire shtick on that fucking show. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, Mr. Dress Up. Oh, I loved Mr. Dress Up. Um, when I was a kid, uh, we had fucking Louis, Oh shit, what is his name? Louis. Hey, Salatus. Thanks for the super chat, Toe Dance. Thank you very much. Louis Anderson. Jenna, 
Yeah, that was the class. That's like the that was the, like the long term host back in the day. Yeah, Louis Anderson was sort of when I was younger. He hosted. He's got a really annoying voice. Selling food gets boring after watching Steve trying to make everything funny. Yeah, especially because like I just don't find. I've never watched any of his stand up. Like I'm not like I've never watched any of uh, Steve Harvey's actual comedy, but the little bits that I've seen of uh, his time as uh, Family Feud host, he's not funny as the host. Like it's, I don't know. Shit, let them. <laughs> Let LeVar Burton host Family Feud, then. <laughs> I will say the very funniest uh, Family Feud thing ever. Um, Price is right. Oh, they've got a male model now? Nice. Yeah, the uh, my mom was in town. We watched her STD trivia. It's interesting and fun to play along. We were laughing so hard, so the answers people wrote. Glad you enjoyed. Glad you enjoyed, Cherry. But the uh, the best Family Feud moment uh, is during like that final round, and uh, yeah, you know, like the speed round is during that speed round, and one of the questions was, uh, in what month of pregnancy does a woman usually start to show, and the contestant said September, and. Uh, it was the old host, the uh, the old dude who like who always kissed all the women, uh, was the host back then, and he just completely fucking lost it. It's a dumb question. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> you know, it's a whatever question. But it was like the contestant just completely like it was just an absolute brain fart on the part of the contestant. Like she just complete is one of those things where high stress like high stress uh situation and trying to think fast and latching on to the specific word um people start showing different months well, yeah but whatever but yeah like she just latched on to the wrong word in the question and just like is the rest of the question sort of like slipped right out of her he uh, head and so in what month of pregnancy does a woman th usually start to show? September. And the dude completely lost it. Like, he could not get his shit back together. Um, he was able, like, he finally got together enough to uh, finish up that particular uh that contestant, and then brought out the next, and then brought out the second person from the family for the second half of the, uh, of the thing. And, again, just started to completely lose it when he got to that question, because he was remembering just how much he lost it when a woman said September in the first place. So he just completely lost it again. And this this poor woman is sitting there. No idea why he's laughing. Like, no idea why he's laughing so much. And, like, he keeps trying to get it together. It's like, all right, all right, the question. I'd love to hear it. And he just fucking dies again. So. Next. I saw a clip of, uh, I saw somebody do a clip, I saw someone post a uh, clip the other day from Next, which was bad. <laughs> that it seemed just like a bad show. Pirate Supergirl from the CW? Yeah, sure, go ahead, Bo Boozin.
Shall we shall we look at comics now? Shall we look at comics? Because I want to look at comics. I don't really care what the rest of you want to do. <laughs> Joking. Sailor V. And I've got the, uh, yeah, there's Sailor V. Yeah, I've got the, uh, complete, complete Sailor Moon, uh, Eternal Edition. I really need to finish watching it or reading this. I read like the first four volumes, I think. Of 12. I really need to get around to finishing it. Love the covers. They're really lovely covers. And lots of like really good art. So yeah, that's something I need to finish reading. Hi, Casey, you ugly brat. Uh, so yeah, this box is uh, all like little things. Hell hath no fury. Say Meredith and Claren. These are just, I don't know, giant days. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I don't care what anybody says. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl was one of the best comics ever. It even opened with her doing her own rendition of uh, her own theme song. It's just like it's a really fun, cute. Yeah, it's just a really cute, sweet comic. No, none of the pages are stuck together. Yeah, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl was just like a really fun comic. A lot of humor. And even got its own graphic novel. Unbeatable Squirrel beats up the Marvel Universe. This is where I learned that uh, squirrels are the greatest threat to modern society. No, it's true. Squirrels are the biggest threat to uh, to modern society. It's true. Um, squirrels cause more power outages than anything else. Squirrels like are the number one cause of like power outages and. Squirrels are the number one uh, cause of power outages and stuff like that. Daniel Close. Uh, I'm not sure who Daniel Close is. I'm not overly familiar with Daniel Close. Yeah. He ran for a good long time as well. A 
Like Squirrel Girl got a seriously long run. And a great run. Ran for, I think, 58 issues, which is, you know, just shy of five years. Unstoppable Wasp by Jeremy Whitley and the absolutely wonderful Gurahiru. Gurahiru is such good art. Like, their art is just so much, so adorable. A series of Berserk comes out. I do just absolutely love the art. the other uh, Wasp series as well. But maybe not. The Nancy Drew comic from uh, Kelly Thompson and uh, Jen St. Ange and Triana Farrell. Which starts with her dangling from a tree, holding a goat. Never heard of a squirrel girl. She's act. Squirrel girl was actually created by one of the. Squirrel girl was created by Steve Ditko, who is also the co-creator of Spider Man. So the same dude who uh, first drew Spider-Man also came up with a uh, Squirrel Girl, who is just like a really super fun character, super positive and yeah. Toe dance. Well, these are the comics I'm keeping. Vision by uh, Tom King, Gabriel Hernandez, and Jordi Belair. The Vision limited series is really critically acclaimed, uh, very much beloved. Pretty incredible uh, comic. Uh, amazing, fantastic, incredible, a marvelous memoir. Stan Lee. Peter David and Colleen Doran. Mad Magazine? Uh, I don't have any Mad Magazines. Love me some Colleen Doran art. Or Colleen Doran art. Remarkable ability to appear frozen on screen. Toe Dance! Welcome, Toe Dance! Yeah, Colleen Doran is, uh, Doran is just so good. Is Mad still around? I honestly don't know if Mad still exists. Like, Cracked obviously reinvented itself for the internet. I'm not sure if... I think Mad fell way behind on that. S of M. Yeah, whatever. It's been Civil War or whatever. Infinity Gauntlet. Omnibus. Great storyline in the comics. Shitty movie. 
or shitty story in the movie. X-Men Days of Future Past. Mess card. This was one from a free comic book day. I'm not sure if I've ever actually even read that one. Suburban Glamour, Jamie McKelvey. Uh, Jamie McKelvey is best known for his collaborations with uh, Kieran Gillen, but he has done some uh, comics of his own as well. Suburban Glamour. Was a pretty good one. It was a good one. I liked Suburban Glamour. McAlvey does some uh, really cool layouts here and there as well. He's got a really good sense of uh, making the page, making a page flow. Nice seashell pillow. Thanks, Boozin. Oh, hi, Sam. Here's a Sam, everybody. Penny by Ananth Hirsch and Yuko Yuko Oda. Very fun comic. Page by Page by Laura Lee Gulledge. Also very cool. Like it's... Uh... Some really interesting art choices throughout the book. This is sort of like a uh, graphic novel, but sort of. This is that high school, I think. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Her desires to be an artist. Because it's sort of a book about trying to be an artist, there's a lot of sort of artsy stuff all throughout it. Makes for a very interesting read. Carolyn in the city driving? No. Hey, Jordan. As far as I know, Elizabeth, it'll be fine. Sam, 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 Sam. I know, Rebecca, I know. I need to, uh, The vacuum's a little bit, uh, 
I know, Rebecca. The vacuum actually needs a little bit of a cleanup itself. The, uh, oh yes. The Adventures of Superhero Girl by Faith Aaron Hicks. Superhero superhero story done the Canadian way. This is just sort of a uh, a cute little uh, cute little superhero comic. Not as much about being. Growing up as it is, but uh, so, yeah, superhero girl is a very fun one. And, and Faith Aaron Hicks is just such, like such a great artist. So much character. Really enjoy her. What the? That nah, is just it's just dust. It's just uh, dust boozing. Uh, what else? More Faith Aaron Hicks, Friends with Boys. Black and white for this one. What do I do? These are the comics that I'm keeping. Like, these are all things that I'm keeping. Hopeless Savages Break. That's my vacuum. Not that long ago, but the vacuum is uh, needs uh, a little bit of... Uh, the vacuum itself actually needs cleaned up a little bit. The uh, the bristles on the bottom. That is so small. It's big enough for me. Wall rack display. Might be. Yeah, probably should. Comic book. Something like that. Love me some uh, Meredith McLaren. And Jen Van Meters, uh, Jen Van Meters are really good. Uh, and Christine Nori art as well here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, yeah. It's a two minute thing, but it's just. Yeah, she's just. I just really love Meredith McLaren's art. Yeah, Hopeless Savages. This is a really good series. Hopeless Savages are a really good series of uh, graphic novels. There's four volumes. Break is the fourth. 
Um, the first one. So the first one is sort of just like, like the first Hopeless Savages book is just sort of like this wild adventure type of book. Just uh, sort of silly and over the top and really fun. Second one is uh, a lot more, still a lot of fun, but sort of a lot more dramatic with art by Brian Lee O'Malley. The guy behind uh, the uh, Scott Pilgrim comics. Third one is sort of back to back to lighter fun. And then the fourth one, Break, is once again back to more uh, dramatic stuff. With one of my absolute all time favorite artists. Scooter Girl, China Clugston Flores. Tiny Clucks and Flores is best known for uh, Blue Monday. Where's the hentai? I don't actually have any hentai. Yeah, her art is, uh, you know, she's got a really cute art style. And hi, Cam. Looks like 60s mod girl. I mean, that's what this comic is based off. Like, that's what this is sort of going for, is 60s mod. Might actually be set in the 60s. Because, yeah, it is It is uh, mod. Like, it is mod culture that it's sort of going by. Okay. I don't know. It's just, it's a really fun... I really like that one. Uh, nothing can possibly go wrong. Prudence Chen and once again, Faith Aaron Hicks. I do like me some Faith Aaron Hicks. So I picked that one up because of her. Gotta support my Canadian cartoonists. Uh, Super Mutant Magic Academy by Jillian Tamaki. This is... I have never actually read Stranger in Paradise. I know I should, but... Sports are so homoerotic. All that testosterone and those manly bodies crashing into one another, it's very sexually tense. I think you're reading too much into it. Love Jillian Tamaki. Got to meet her once and she was so sweet. I'm, I, she's Canadian. Of course she's sweet. She's Canadian. Philip McAndrew is a hero. Whoa, something's going on the other side of the court. Look at that. Someone's found himself in quite a pickle. Ha ha ha. <laughs> like, it's just such... A lot of the jokes are just so silly. This one summer. I do have this. Uh, I do have that one summer. Or this one summer. Yeah, she's just... 
Tamaki just had so much fun with this one. I did that. had some pretty interesting uh guys in here as well. I feel like I should reread this one actually. Um this island, the first two issues of Island, which was a uh anthology series that Image put out for uh for a little while. The literally the reason I got this is uh emma rios had uh some pages in it had a story in, had a story in the first two issues and i love emma rios so that's the only reason i got island uh, she did it with, uh, she put that, she was, uh, sort of one of the, uh, people who put that one together. Um, uh, her and Brandon Graham were the two who, uh, put that series, that, uh, Island Anthology together. And then it turned out that Graham sucked as a person. Not a good person, as it turned out. Um, yeah. Ooh. You had treats, Casey. All right, so this is all, like, uh, these are all image, uh, comics. Snot Girl! By Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. I can love Leslie Hung's art. This was my, like, this comic was my first interact, uh, introduction to Leslie Hung's art. I picked it up because I like Brian Lee O'Malley. Man, Leslie Hung is so damn good. Snot Girl is so good. It is. Snot Girl is really fun. And, like, it's, like... It is such a weird comic. Like it's a deeply fucked up comic, but it's just so much fun and uh like I said, Leslie Hung is just amazing. I look forward to, uh, I look forward to more of this, more Snuck Girl. Um, because supposedly there is going to be more. From what I understand. Like, I think there is, like, I think O'Malley and Hung are still sort of planning to do more. Which is good because it's uh Brandon Graham. Oh yes, Cam. Uh Brandon Graham got cancelled years ago. Um like yeah, Brandon Graham got cancelled a good few years ago. Uh for sexual harassment. Um I think the main thing I think the main thing he did was sexual harassment. Still friends with them on Facebook. Uh, did you not hear about? Uh, did you not hear about his stuff? Give me a second to look him up again, real quick. 
Yeah, I forget exactly. I forget some of the details, but. Alleged abuser. Yeah, it's like a Pete article doesn't talk about it. Yeah, he was, uh, most of your comic people. Well, yeah, most comic people, most people in the comic industry are lovely people. Brandon Graham was, uh, accused of, uh, of abuse. Um, I think of, uh, I think he might have been, uh, accused of certain uh, amounts of, uh, trans chasing. Sexually, like sexual harassing uh, trans people um, in a creepy way. Uh, anyway, LaGuardia, LaGuardia by Nadia Corafor and Tana Ford. I do like uh, Tana Ford's art. This one actually had, uh, won an award. I believe this one won an Eisner. It's uh, very much political commentary. Um, when did it come out? 2018, I think it was. Yeah, came out in 2018. This one is basically just all about reaction. Does anybody remember very early, sort of very early in 2017, uh, when Trump instituted his uh, sort of Muslim ban and uh, there were protests outside airports? No, Cam, no. No, this one is, uh, it's sort of future. It's a sort of sci-fi futurism um, set in the future. And uh, it's about people protesting against uh, bans on uh, aliens entering the U.S. So it was uh, very much intended as uh, political commentary on that. Mirror by Emma Rios and uh, crap, forgetting the other person's name, Huey Lim. Again, I picked it up because of uh, because it's Emma Rios. This is a weird series. This is a very this series is kind of confusing a lot of times, but lovely art. Good old bitch planet. Pretty much uh, boozing. Do I do hospital corners? I don't know what that means. Can I tell that? It is a... It is sort of a satire of uh, women's prison movies. 
prison ex- of like sex exploitation movies, prison sex exploitation movies. Uh, it's uh, very much political commentary. Uh, yeah, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Valentin Delandro. Let the glass you. So yeah, it is about uh, a women's prison. So yeah, Bitch Planet is about a women's prison. And uh, the inmates there. And their prison movies. Sort of uh, old things. Um, Example, is it the second issue that features the uh, the obligatory shower scene? Hey, Barbara. Third issue. Uh, third issue features uh, obligatory pr- uh, shower scene. Uh, women in a shower in prison. Uh, so it's uh, it's intended as a uh, sort of a send up. The only featured women in prison. Yep. So yeah, it's uh, it's a feminist send up of sort of old. Satire, yeah, satire. Very deconic. If Ke- Kelly Sue DeConnick is sort of, uh, you know, is very much a feminist writer. Um, so she was sort of taking that genre, that exploitative, that exploitation genre, and uh, putting a feminist spin on it. Sadly, it's been uh, on hiatus for. How long at this point? So I wanted this 2017. It's been on hiatus for uh, five years now. The Wicked and the Divine. I got really lucky. To get the uh, Brian Lee O'Malley cover. Because I love that. I mean, Brian Lee O'Malley. Of course I had to get the Brian Lee O'Malley cover. Jamie McKelvey sort of did like this overly intricate design for uh, for this character's outfit, thinking that he wouldn't have to do it very often and kind of hated himself for it. Hey, Lambo. Hey, Dandy.
So yeah, uh, The Wicked and the Divine. Um, that one ran for quite a while. How long did it run for? Forty-five issues. Um, yeah, uh, that one's like a just a phenomenal series. They've been trying for a good few years to turn uh, the Wick and the Divine into a uh, into a TV show. Not sure if uh, anything's been done on it lately. Your wine is fifty dollars. There's a bit of a uh, theme for the uh, a lot of the covers. A lot of the covers are just uh, close-ups of faces. Not quite all of them, but a lot of them are. And then occasionally, there's uh, a lot of the issues had variant covers. So this one is uh, Erica Henderson variant because I do really like Erica Henderson. Uh, is this a variant or not? Yep. Chris Anka variant cover. There might have been a few variant covers that I got uh, sort of right after the other. Sorry, just trying to figure out uh, who each of these variant covers is. Kevin Wada variant cover. Ward. Yeah, Christian Ward variant cover. He's got a very distinctive style that's uh, pretty easy to tell. Ooh, who was this one? I don't remember who this one was. I like this cover. Ah, shit. That's Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham variant, which is a great cover, but that was before it turned out that uh, that was before the revelations about him came out. <laughs> I believe this one is still. Yep. Yeah. In my own world? I am. I'm very much in my own world. World of comics. On background noise. Shit, I'm pretty much my own background noise at this point, I think. 
when the comic thing blow up from Superman and Batman to this? Um, I don't know. Ten years ago? Ten or so years ago, I guess? God damn, who's this one? Sophie Campbell, right? Fucking Sophie goddamn Campbell. Look at that cover. I've read all the comics I have. Fendi's, I've read all the comics I have. Where are the Xena comics? Uh, I never picked any of those up. Yeah, Sophie Campbell is amazing. That one looks like a variant. Perfumes? No. Ah, Noelle Stevenson. Or, yeah, this one is uh, Nate Stevenson now. Before he uh, before he changed his name. Doc on Doc I don't think so. Good not sleep on a twin unless it's one of the Nelson brothers. Yeah, Stevenson. So that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Russell Dodderman. Phenomenal artist. That one, I think I said, was... Uh, Grisanka, and then yeah, I think the rest are uh, regular covers. Who is this variant by? Ah, Emma Rios, yes. Should make comics now. Emma Rios, hell yeah. And then for the very final issue of the series. Oh. Doesn't get this one back. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Blanking on her name. Olivia James. For the very final cover, they got Olivia James. Satirizing her own... Uh, Nancy style, uh, style. Right around this time, Olivia James, like, had not long before, had taken over as writer of the, uh, the newspaper comic Nancy. So, like, not long before this, she had taken over as, uh, on, uh, she, hey, Limbo. She had taken over the, uh, the comic Nancy, the comic strip Nancy. So they managed to get her to do this silly little cover for the final issue, which, uh, love it. Die! Gillen and Hans. God damn, Stephanie Hans is... Incredible. I mean, just look at how amazing she is. Jazz Gunsters? Nah. Comic stores don't really hire, sadly. So yeah, Stephanie Hans is just one of the most incredible artists I've ever actually I've ever seen.
Susan the Banshee? Uh, I mean, there's a couple Susie uh, songs I like. There's a couple Banshee songs I like, but not very many. I respect them more than I enjoy them, I think. Uh, what else is in here? Ah, Phonogram. Volume 3 of Phonogram. Hilary Duff is Lizzie McGuire. I don't believe you. They're two different people. Phonogram, of course, is all about uh, Gillen and McKelvey being entirely too into uh, into pop music. <laughs> that was a series that uh, sort of made them famous. Yes. Insects by Marguerite Bennett and Ariella Cristantina. Sexy ass feminist body horror. Like I said, sexy. Yeah, the comic Insects by Bennett and Christentina. It's a sexy, feminist, Victorian body horror. Very creepy. But also very sexy. And then Pretty Deadly, I've got uh, all of Pretty Deadly. My favorite series. Western? Yes, the first volume is a Western. Yeah, I suppose the other volumes are sort of Westerns as well. I just love the motion. And I mean, yeah. The expressions, the character acting. And give me a second here. I mean, look at, like, look at this. You can fucking hear the wind 
flowing across the uh, the page there. You know? Where's... Go. So yeah, here's the uh, here's the bit where my bracelet comes from. The storm is so big and she is so small. The force of the raindrops must feel like hammers from uh, from the sky. And look, the water grows heavy on her wings. How does she stay aloft? I'm afraid there's no secret to it, butterfly. The hummingbird simply must work harder in the rain. This one is pretty deadly. The first volume is uh, sort of just a, uh, very much a Western uh, about death. The second volume is set a little bit later. Is this the one set in Hollywood? No, this one is uh, about war. Volume two is about war. Set in World War One. So yeah, second volume is set in World War One, and is about uh, why war exists. There is a third volume set in the nineteen thirties. Uh, did I not get that? Did I not get the collection for that one? I guess I never got the collection on that collected edition for that one. Weird overset on my part. Yeah, there's a third volume set in uh, Hollywood in the 1930s, which is about uh, sort of the entertainment industry. Sort of more, well, about three. The World War One one is actually sort of like about luck. A major theme in the second volume is uh, is luck. So there's like a story that runs through a couple of the issues. Um, like an old legend, an old story. Uh, all right, so this one, just more little things. Comics will break your heart. This one is a prose novel. This one is a novel by Faith Aaron Hicks. This one's prose. Squirrel Girl. Uh, I've got the first two Squirrel Girl novels. Squirrel Meets World and Too Fuzzy, Too Furious. Both absolutely adorable. Uh, again, those are novels. Yeah, here's a good one. Need a bookshelf that's why I was pretty good. Uh, no. This is a good one. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and uh, Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This one's really... Uh... This one's critically acclaimed. Um, this one, I think, won an award. Um... Or was nominated, at least. It is. And it's, uh, this one is about sort of like a, uh, sort of like a toxic relationship. A teen girl whose girl keeps break, uh, whose girlfriend keeps, uh, is sort of like toxic for. 
the uh, Ocarina of Time manga. So yeah, there is a uh, somebody did do a manga of uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Your handsome boy, everybody's handsome boy, Link. A lot of changes from the uh, the game. It's sort of very loose. It it sort of only loosely follows the uh, the game story. Yeah, Captain Marvel novel. Uh, Rainbow Rowell and Faith Aaron Hicks, Pumpkinheads. I actually remember uh, picking this one up during one of Chantel's live streams. Like I actually, like I actually distinctly remember getting this one during a uh, Chantel live stream. Anyway, that's a very cute, uh, cute book. Yeah, is this volume three? Oh no! Oh right! Sorry, one second. What age groups are these looking for? Various. Uh, lend them on. Uh, various age groups. The Real Folk Blues, a Cowboy Bebop fan book. Uh, so yeah, this. Sure, where to go? This is one of the few times where I back something uh, on a physical level on Kickstarter, so that I could get this pin. And so I could get. Uh, this Emma Rios print. Yeah, this is uh, just like fan comics and essays and stuff like that. Um, got a you know big list of uh, people involved in it. Leslie Hung involved, Emma Rios involved. Yeah, this one was uh, this one was really good. Where am I keeping the thermostat? Uh, I think just under twenty. Yeah, that one's uh, really good. I like that. Uh, totally. No, I didn't forget about it, but yeah, that one's really cool. Maybe I'll, maybe once I finish my uh, Cowboy Bebop rewatch, maybe I'll uh, actually give that one a uh, reread as well. Yeah, once I finish my uh, rewatch of the Cowboy Bebop series, I might uh, reread that uh, fan book. Change filter recently. Uh, I'm not sure if it needs it yet. Skim by Mariko, T uh, Mariko and Jillian Tamaki. God damn it. Damn it, scapegoat. I 
Mariko and Jillian work well together. Animosity by Marguerite Bennett and Raphael De La Torre. The premise of this comic is that uh, one day all the animals suddenly become sentient and are able to talk. And uh, yeah, it's a horror. It's a it's a horror, but it's got like a distinct sense of humor. <laughs> this is such a weird ass fucking joke here. Fantas, why did you keep us alive for so long? God damn it. Uh, what's got say here? If you ever fucking hit her again, I will cut your fucking eyes out of your skull uh, while you sleep. So. It's a weird comic, but it's uh, got a lot of horror. It's so yeah, it's uh, really weird, but really good. It's a really good comic. I'll get some stuff out of order. Whoops. Invisible Kingdom by uh, G. Will Wilson and Christian Ward. Christian goddamn Ward. Naughty Comics. I'm not sure which box I put the Naughty Comic in, actually. Christian Ward's just like a ridiculously good at, uh, artist. Yeah, here's th my third volume of Pretty Deadly. Uh, and here's my fancy ones. New Mutants Annual, Steal This Planet. I want this on a t-shirt. Like, remove the New Mutants Annual. Like, remove the, uh, the trade dress. I want this one. Hi, Sam. Like, I really want this without the trade dress as a t-shirt. Because it's such a great cover. New Mutants uh, graphic novel. Or no, this is New Mutants number one. Whoops. Not the graphic novel. New Mutants number one. Alpha Flight number one. And number two, for some, apparently. Uh, issue of Wolverine that was signed by Larry Hama. Some three claimed comics from Fantagraphics. So yeah, I got Larry Hama's signature on that one. Jeff Isherwood uh, sketch of uh, commission of uh, She-Hulk. This I bought just because I was curious. It's bad. A oh, couple more issues that die here, apparently. Sam, I'm pointing the camera at you. You gotta stay on the bed so that the camera can see you, Sam. The people want to see you, boy. The people want to see you. The people want to see you, Sam. Sam looks down. He usually is. He usually does. Makes me grit my teeth. He's so cute. 
Ugh. Yeah, come on, Sam. Have a sleepover and stay up all night reading comics? Stoned on catnip. Just weird, because I don't even keep catnip in the house. We don't even keep any catnip in the house. Like, we don't even have any catnip. Alright, one last box of comics I'm going to be keeping. So yeah, this box is the last of my to keep. Demon Days X-Men. By uh, Peach Momoko. Keeping this issue solely because this is such a adorable cover. Also this one. Adorable cover. This one because this like uh, this issue because it's just I mean Magma going on a date with Mephisto is just such an amazing idea. X-Men Grand Design. Because it was kind of fun. And then uh, Extinction. This man will come to forever. Again, just a fun Scotty Young cover. Uh, Doctor Strange the End. Again, I'm pretty sure I'm keeping this one from uh, more for the cover than anything else. Just because Emma Rio's cover. Is this an Emma Rio comic? Oh, no, that's not Emma Rios. No, that's not Rios. That's uh, Andrade. Where is that Rios? Andrade. It is Andrade. Yeah, keeping this one just because I do like uh, Philippe Andrade. Spider-Man and Venom Double Trouble just because Gorihiru. Power Pack. Black Bolt. The very... This series did the impossible. It made me actually give a shit about Black Bolt as a character. Helps that, you know, Christian Ward... But yeah, Black Bolt, uh, the Black Bolt solo series actually made me care about the character, which is impossible because I've never cared about him. Captain Marvel, the end. Another gorgeous uh, Momoko cover. And of course, I am keeping uh, Ms. Marvel. The Ms. Marvel solo se uh, series. Because this is, to me, this is like damn near the platonic ideal of a teen superhero comic. And the, uh, Wonderful art, of course, by Adrian Alfona and uh, who was the color artist? Ian Herring, right? Yes, loved Ian Herring's heart uh, colors throughout uh, the entirety of that run. Yeah, I do think that uh, Ms. Marvel, especially the first ten issues or so, is all is kind of like the platonic ideal of a super teen superhero comic.
Team me up with Wolverine! Also, I really like the uh, Jamie McKelvey covers. Anything Marvel or Invincible is my cup of tea. Yeah, I actually make it instead of the first 10 issues, maybe the first 20 or so. About the first 50. So yeah, the first 15 issues. The first 15 issues are sort of the platonic ideal of a superhero comic. Last of Days was really good. Once it relaunched after Secret Wars, it did feel like it was missing a little bit of what made it uh, special to begin with. But it did retrieve, uh, get back some of it at times. Uh, the Slot All Red Silver Surfer. I'm not a big fan of Slot, either as a writer or just in general. But... Do love the all, I do love the all reds. And uh, it's just such a Hey Steph. Oh MG. I missed MG. MG, hi MG. Sorry. Sorry, MG, I was uh, distracted by my comics. Yeah, I mean, it's just... The All Reds. I feel like the All Reds always bring out the best in whatever art, whatever writer they're working with. The Never Queen. Painting and doing repairs around the new house. It's pure chaos. Fair enough. So yeah, Silver Surfer was just a phenomenal series. Uh, Gillen's run on uh, Journey into Mystery. I'm keeping this one just because it's real, real good. Very, very... Uh, Really clever stuff throughout uh, throughout Gillen's run on Journey into Mystery. Young Avengers, because that was just such a great comic. I got super lucky with this one. The uh, Brian Lee O'Malley variant cover. I got super lucky. Uh, I had gone into, like, the comic had come out, like, two weeks earlier, or a week or two, like, the series had come out, like, this had launched, like, a week or two or, uh, before I went into the comic shop, um, so I had no expectation that this would actually be there, that uh, this variant cover would actually be there, but it was, they still had a copy of this variant cover left, which was so damn lucky. And uh, one thing that's uh, that's really good about uh, this particular series is uh, every issue they tried to give at least one really cool layout. Put my friends very handsome sleeves. Here's the it's a very meta right. 
Very famous uh, America Chavez cover there. Cool layout for this page, but uh, that's not the special layout for this issue. Well, maybe it was. Turn the pages with my feet. No! So, yeah, a lot of really cool, interesting layouts uh, all throughout the, this run of Young Avengers. Angela! That was a really interesting series. You know, Phil Jimenez is an uh, amazing enough uh, artist. You know, like Phil Jimenez is pretty damn uh, good himself. But then you've got uh, some... Some flashbacks by Stephanie fucking Hans. Also, this series features a trans woman who's got a little bit of flesh on her bones. You know, she's uh, not fat, but she's, you know, she's a little bit plump. I'm not keeping much of the uh, Secret War stuff, but Siege, just because Gillen and it's got some pretty great uh, artists all throughout it. Some really good splash pages here and there. Yeah, the, uh, as she was originally drawn, yeah, she was thick. See, each issue of uh, Siege has uh, several double page splashes that are just fucking awesome. Revolutionary War, why not? Marvel UK, because I actually enjoyed Marvel UK. Catherine Eminem, the lady of shitty run on uh, Journey into Mystery, featuring Sif. This was uh, my first experience with uh, Valeria Sch uh, Skitty's art. I was not disappointed at all. Because uh, it is, and he is so good. Uh, they are not categorized at all, Elizabeth. They're not organized at all. They should have been. I should have organized them, but I didn't. I didn't bother. Oh, what happened? Did I skip past an issue, or...? So yeah, keeping that one just because I really enjoyed that uh, that series. Nighthawk. Better than it had any right to be. 
Weird World. Mike Del Fucking Mundo. I'm just like. Fucking look at Mike Del Mundo's art. Like, this dude is, like, he is ridiculous. Like, Mike Del Mundo is just unfucking real. Yeah, here's uh, the first Unstoppable Wasp series. All right, that's all my comics. How many years have you been accumulating? Um, mostly since, like, you know, mostly since, uh, like, what was it, 2006, 2007? I think it's about 2007 that I started getting back into comics. Most of my collecting came after 2010 or so. Though I was reading comics before then. Like, I was reading comics as a kid. Um, hey, Nancy. Like, I read comics as a kid. So I grew up with comics. I fell out of, I fell out of reading them maybe around 99 or 2000 that I fell out of reading them and then back into reading them around 2006 ish. All right. So that's the comics I'm keeping. Writing again. Eh. Gotta practice my labor inch. Ow. Why well, you know backer teach parents? Um, I mean, if I was still buying comics, if I was still buying comics, I would probably get as many Peach Momoko variants as possible. Uh, she would be sort of the main, you know, if there was a Peach Momoko variant, I would probably ask for it. That said, um, you know, how many of her variants are like, you know, I still haven't read Demon Days. I only read the first, uh, I only read the first issue of the first uh, Demon Days. So I haven't read Demon Days either. Um, unfortunately, I sort of, Stop being able to go to like I stopped being able to afford comics right when Demon Days was coming out, so I never actually got a chance to read it. Sadly, just the first issue, which I loved. It was amazing. Demon Days art and has nice. But yeah, if I was still if I was still collecting comics, if I was still able to, if I was still able to afford. Hey, hey, baby. Comics. Um, then I'd get Peach Momoko variants whenever I could. That said, uh, how often do they end up being ones that, like, require the store, the store to buy a specific number of, uh, of copies? Uh, have I ever been to a Comic-Con? Yes. I've been to Ottawa Comic-Con once. And, uh, 
Cornwall area pop event, which is sort of Cornwall's version of a Comic Con uh, twice. Yeah, because I know that back when I lived in Cornwall, there were variant covers that I missed out on simply because of uh, he couldn't afford, like he had no reason to buy enough copies of uh, of a given comic to be able to qual to be able to get specific variant uh, cover variants. Uh, comics profitable. Not particularly. You don't go into comics because you expect to make money. Who was at the Auto Comic Con? Um, I'm trying to remember who was there. When's the last time to Montreal? Over 10 years. Well over 10 years since I've been to Montreal. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember who was at the uh, Comic Con I went to. Fair, I think a fair number of creators that I... You know, a lot of like sort of small time comic creators, um, sort of people publishing their own comics. Um, yeah, I don't even remember if there was anyone there that was, uh, I'm pretty sure Jeff Isherwood was there. I'm pretty sure Jeff Isherwood was there just because he's, you know. He's an easy get. Yeah, and that I honestly don't remember who was there the last the uh, the year I went. Sadly, most of the artists that I like, most of the comic creators that I would most want to see, have no reason to go to an Ottawa comic comic con. TCAF, the Toronto Comic Arts Festival, yes, they have reason to go to that. But Ottawa Comic Con, they have no reason to go. They, it's like it's not worthwhile for them. Any merch? Yeah, yeah, I bought like that's where I bought some of the my prints. Like I think that's where I got this print. I think it's where I got my uh, most of my uh, yeah these two prints. I think. Yeah, I got uh, I got stuff at the Ottawa Comic Con. Chasing Amy. Yeah, I watched Chase, uh, Chasing Amy back in the day. Hey, JJT. I see. You. Sam's out in the hall right now. Dressed up as an anime girl. I don't know. Maybe sometime, but uh, no, I'd probably be more. I probably prefer to just wear like a T-shirt. I don't know that cosplay is something I'd want to do. BlizzCon? I have not, Habibi. I get the appeal of, of uh, cosplay. It's just not for me. You know, it's something fun and creative and sort of be part of the community and that sort of thing, but one of those influencers con? Nah, probably not. There's a... Sam was all over this stream. Smell the litter box from here? No, you can't. I cleaned it. I scooped it. I scooped it last. I scooped it uh, earlier, Nancy, so no, you can't uh, smell it. I kind of forgot. I forgot to scoop it last night. So I scooped it today.
wasn't that bad actually. It wasn't uh, too big a deal though. Wasn't that. Bye, ugly. Go away. Go now. You can leave. You're dismissed. Farewell. Her door is open, so I mean, yes, it is aired out. Anunnaki, is this pre-recorded? It is not. Yeah, like as far as airing out her room, like the door is open, so yes, it has. Been, it's always airing itself out, and no, it doesn't stink. She cleaned it before she left. So, Seattle fatty, you are not blocked yet. Panty raid? No. No panty raids. Don't know if any of you have ever heard of the webcomic uh, Lackadaisy, but uh, Iron Circus Comics um, funded a uh, an animated film trailer for a uh, Lackadaisy movie just dropped. Can you stare at me after I do a ship? It makes me feel a bit. Oh, after I do a whip. Yeah, so lackadaisy, it's a, uh, it's a webcomic about, uh, like, Prohibition era, but, like, with cats. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty fun. You're a fashion designer? I don't really go for fashion. I'm joking, Seattle fatty. Yeah, so Lackadaisy, uh, set in Prohibition era, 1927 Chicago, with uh, anthropomorphic cats. Chronicles the fortunes of a speakeasy after its founder is murdered. Mixes elements of comedy, crime, and mystery. So, yeah, it's a, uh, been going for a while. Um... And it's uh, going to be released soon. So, I feel like the uh, last 17 I volunteered for Mike, Spike, and Miles at Scrapegoat. Spike and Mike's? Oh, Spike and Mike's. So 
fish nets or shears. I don't know, I think fish nets look sexier, but Border Patrol agent, no. No, I would not work at that job ever. No, absolutely not. Um, and they wouldn't want me at that job because I would just like let everyone go free. You know, unless like they're an actual, you know, unless they're an actual criminal, you know, I have no interest in busting people just because they cross the border. No, fuck that. Hey, Chantel. Well, there are the cats. She's whiny. This is how she is. She's whiny. She wants treats all the time. No, I'm not kissing your head. As for Sam, because I'm sure you want to see Sam as well. No, Casey, no more treats right now. No treats right now. Actually, it's getting a little bit low on treats. There's Sam for you. Good old Sam, Sam. Sam, Sam. You look sad. <laughs> I think he was looking at Casey. All right, back to me. Back to me, you're looking at me again. Don't be an asshole animal. Whiny, you little whiny. Wolf Therians. Hey, Elaine. Uh, right now I'm doing nothing.
Uh, Barbara, I didn't actually eat yet. I wasn't really hungry. I'll probably go eat soon. Casey, she's the only one who ever meows. Make a sandwich? Nah. Thanks, Cam. I like looking at my comics, remembering what I've got. Would I get a perm? Nah. Do I have hot dogs? I don't. I got ground beef. And that's about it. Hey, Chandeller. Alright, I think I'm gonna end the stream here. I think I am about done for the night. Anunnaki? Yeah, I don't work out. You know I don't work out Anunnaki. I'll probably just throw together a uh, quick spaghetti. Thanks for coming. And I'll uh, see you all tomorrow. For something. And uh, bye bye.